Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby. <coughs> Excuse me. And tonight we continue on chapter 10 of St. Mark. And today, James and John ask for a favor. And uh, Jesus is not quite pleased with it. But before we get to that, and we'll have the help of St. John in his gospel explaining what's going on. But first, let's read our psalm for the day. And that's psalm number 16. So turn your Bibles to Psalm 16. And in this psalm we have a prophecy. Let's go ahead and read it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, that's the place of the dead, or let your Holy One see corruption. And that's our prophecy, the resurrection. You make, no, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now in this psalm, David is, is speaking, but he's speaking the words of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit here is prophesying about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So, let's turn now to St. Mark. Chapter 10, starting at verse 35. St. Mark, chapter 10, verse 35 is our starting point. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Now, the cup that he's talking about is his crucifixion. And his baptism is the cleansing, washing, his death, which cleanses the world. So the cup is the crucifixion, and his death is that baptism which cleanses the world. And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left, is not mine to grant. But it is for those whom it has been prepared. Now Jesus is not saying he lacks the authority to grant their favor. But he won't make that decision arbitrarily. For the Father has something to say about that also. And when the ten heard of it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and he said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. 
but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Word of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now most will say that James and John are asking for posi political positions. They're not thinking of the kingdom of God. They're thinking that Jesus' glory will be here on earth. They're still thinking of a political kingdom. The Messiah would drive out the Romans, establish a kingdom that would last forever here on earth. That's what they're thinking. And they're, it's like they're asking, well, can I be the Secretary of War and can I be the Secretary of State? That was their thinking. But no, that's, that's not Christ's mission, as we mentioned that before. His is a, a greater kingdom, but not of this world, as he told Pontius Pilate. Now, we have an example in John chapter 13 of Jesus symbolizing what he's just said here. I have come to serve, not to be served. Now in John chapter 13 verse 4, and this takes place at the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, okay? So, Jesus rose from the supper, he laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus said, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. That is, those who would be first must serve. They must be, they must serve their fellow man. They must be last of all. So Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. And he's speaking of Judas there. What he's saying here is that the that practice of ritual cleansing is over. The Jewish practice of ritual cleansing is over. Okay? Tells Peter, you are clean. And the one who has bathed does not need to wash, he's referring to baptism, except his feet but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. So our baptism will become our permanent ritual cleansing. And Jesus demonstrates here that he has come to serve like a servant, like a slave. He washes the feet of those who he has come to serve. All right. Tomorrow... Jesus heals a blind man, Bartimaeus. And that will wrap up chapter 10 of St. Mark's Gospel. So until tomorrow, may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, and have a good day. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh,